night services. Good to see everyone here this evening. Let's go ahead and find our seats. Take our hymn books. Turn to hymn number 195. Hymn number 195. Glory to his name. Let's all stand together. Hymn 195. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Lift it up on that first verse. Down at the cross where my second verse, I am so wondrously saved from sin. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> amen, amen. Let's see, let's see. Second verse here, amen. All right, lift it up on that second verse. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus is sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he saves from sin. Amen. Praise the Lord for that fountain, right? Amen. Saves from sin. And you know the awesome thing about that fountain? It don't ever stop. Yes. Right. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Lift it up on that third verse. Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. Praise the Lord for that extra oomph behind that. All right, lift it up on that last verse. Come on to this mountain so rich and sweet. That's why we're here tonight on a Wednesday night to bring honor and glory to Jesus Christ, right? And uh, glad to see you tonight. Thank you for being here on, on this Wednesday. Hope you've had a wonderful day. I was standing over there next to the hoods while singing, and uh, Miss Brenda's got that fan going. And I thought, man, I'm going to stand right here and preach, right here, and just let that fan just keep on going. And uh, it, yeah, almost, almost, <laughs> not, not quite. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, Brother Augie said, man, that thing's blowing right here. He must be taller than me or something because I can't feel it at all. But uh, can, can you stand next to me and fan me while I preach? <laughs> well, glory to his name. Thank you for being here and I'm glad to see you this evening. Let's pray. I ask the Lord's blessings upon tonight's service. And oh, that God meets with us again and speaks to our heart. Brother Justin, good to see you. Would you ask the Lord to meet with us, please, sir?
Amen. You can be seated there. Let me uh, just remind you, Saturday is Family Saturday. A lot of folks were getting confused on Family Saturday Food Day. Uh, normally, Family Saturday Food Day line up together, uh, but when, they, when you have the last day of the month on one day and the first day of the month on the next, it messes everything up. So, so this, this month is one of those said months. October 1st was on Sunday, so the first Saturday of the month is... October 7th and so Saturday will be family Saturday and also don't forget the uh, prayer meeting there at BB's gym in uh, right here in town and so if you're able to make it uh, come on 10 o'clock come and have prayer meeting there'll be no organized soul winning so it keeps you from from missing the soul winning opportunity but you can come and be in prayer never know you might meet somebody there you've never known or come across somebody you didn't know and uh, so come and be a part of that prayer meeting if you so desire. And then let me also remind you uh, again of the Great Southwest Bible Conference. It's coming up next week, uh, Monday night, Tuesday night. Uh, of course, uh, Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning as well. And a uh, great uh, lineup of preachers will be there. Uh, if, if you liked our reach in the next generation revival, well, this is like that on steroids. And so just um, uh, a lot more folks, a choir special, a lot more singing and uh, special music and a couple preachers. And we look forward to, to going there. And again, Brother Gordon said he'll drive the van on Monday and Tuesday night. So that way, if you get home and uh, you're tired, you don't feel like driving, well, you can just hop in the van and then take a nap. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know how many people will be in the van with you, so I don't know. I can't guarantee an entire seat to yourself. But if you seat with some folks that you know, they might not mind if you just lay across them and, and take a nap on the way there. So, uh, But make sure it's the right people, the right individuals, you know, maybe some family members uh, that might help. And so that's uh, Monday and Tuesday night, and we look forward to, to, to that great Southwest Bible Conference. And then uh, on the 18th, our missionary guest, the Hill family, uh, interesting story. Brother Matthew's in here to, to uh, confirm it uh, with you. But uh, let's see, Trey, where's Trey? There's Trey and Thomas. I'm trying to remember, uh, James, you were with us. And uh, Jonathan, you were with us. And so you guys might remember Brother Shane Hill that uh, was up at, up at Heartland with us and rode in the van with his guys, you know, to the activities. You remember Brother Shane? Yeah. Come to find out, I was, I was wondering about this family, the Hill family. I said, hmm, I wonder if they're related. And I, I got to looking, and they're sent out from Brother Shane's church. So I haven't asked, but they may even be brothers. And uh, Brother Matthew's got a kick out of Brother, Brother Hill that was with us, and he's the pastor of the church and uh, started two or three different churches out in the, in the Georgia area. And uh, just from the sticks uh, of Georgia, and uh, just hilarious, has that Georgian accent, I mean, down perfect. And uh, he was talking about some of the, some of the uh, people that were, uh, I don't remember what the story was, but he was talking about somebody. And he said, he said this girl was crazy in his, his Georgian accent. He said, she was crazy. He said, now, not, not like boots and shorts crazy. And I was like, boots and shorts crazy? What does that mean? And, uh, and we looked at him and Brother Matthews, and I was like, what is that? He goes, you know them girls go out and you know, wear boots with a pair of shorts? And I was like, uh, people in Texas do that all the time. <laughs> I didn't tell him that, but I guess in Georgia, that means you're nuts. And so I was like, oh, wow. And so it was an interesting thing. And uh, so Brother Hill, he, he's just, he's, he's in the right place. God has him in the right place of Georgia. But uh, looking forward to this Hill family, not the same Hills, but uh, they may be related. I'll find out for sure uh, when they get here. But Wednesday the 18th, missionaries to Argentina. And you'll want to come and be a part of that. And those of you that are interested in going on the couples escape, uh, on November 3rd and 4th, again, if you'll go to uh, grab, grab your uh, bulletin on the inside, there's a website. Go there and need to register by October the 9th. If you cannot register and pay by the 9th, do, do them at least a favor. Call them and say, hey, listen, I'm planning on going. I'll pay on this date or that date so they can at least get a tally for how many people are coming and uh, make preparation for, for uh, a set number of people. We don't want to find out we get there. You registered late, and uh, everybody else has books, but you don't. Right? And so uh, look forward to that. If you've never uh, gone on something like that, let me encourage you. It is something good. Uh, I, I don't know much about the church or the pastor there. I've talked to Brother Gaddis, and he said it's a good church, it's a good pastor. I do know Brother Gaddis, Jason Gaddis, and, of course, um, DeVito's, uh, their son is up at Hartland, and Brother Gaddis is now uh, Elias's pastor. But I've heard Brother Gaddis teach, and, and this last uh, year at the MRI when he taught on marriage, marriage and ministry. I've never heard him te teach or preach on marriage. But when he did, I said, man, that was, that was amazing. And then I found out he was teaching at this couple's escape. I said, you know what? We're going we're gonna to go to that and be a help to, to the marriages, I'm sure. So yeah, make sure, grab your bulletin, and uh, make sure to register for that as it comes along. Everybody get up, grab, grab a copy of the prayer list. Anybody need one? All right. Good job, Thomas. You're on it. And so appreciate you doing that. Let's sing another song.
All right, let's go ahead and stand together. And uh, let's take, uh, if you have your sheet there, Psalm 51. If they're not in the pew, grab your Bible. Created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Psalm 51, verse 10, 12, and 13. And uh, we'll sing this tonight, all right? Created me a clean heart. Here we go. Created. And we'll pick up another one next week. We'll we'll talk about that. All right, hymn number 94. Hymn number 94. Oh, I want to see him. Yes. Hymn number 94. As I journey through the land, singing as I go. Hymn number 94. Oh, I want to see him. As I journey through the land, singing as I go. Burning souls to Calvary, through the cliffs and snow. Hidden arrows pierce my soul from without within. on that second when in service for my lord dark may be the night but i'll cling more close to him he will give me life satan snares may vex my soul turn my thoughts aside but my lord is oh i want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of Sing and let's go ahead and greet one another this evening.
back to our seats here. Verse number three, when in valleys low I look toward the mountain height and behold my savior there leading in the light. Amen, praise the Lord, the Lord leads us in the light. Lift it up on that third verse. When in valleys low I look, When before me billows rise, when before me billows rise from the mighty deep, and my Lord has my heart, he does quickly keep, and he leads me gently on through this world below. He's a real friend to me, oh, I love it so. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Let us sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. couple years like I don't know I'm thinking about it maybe and uh, well, oh I want to see him that songwriter as he's writing that I wonder if, if that's our sentiment sometimes or is there something here on earth we just hold on to so much that if Jesus came back we'd be disappointed or is there something on the other flip side we went want Jesus to come back there's something here on earth we're holding on to so much that when he comes back we'll be glad to see him but he will not be as enthusiastic as he would have been yep. if we'd let go human Right? Boy, that's a thought. Hey, you know, that's why some of these uh, churches have got away from these songs like this, because they're convicting when you think about the words you're singing. Oh, yeah. And uh, when you think about what you sing, it's not just about repeating words over and over to God and chanting a song. It's, it's a, many times psalms, spiritual songs and hymns, they speak of the goodness of God, the doctrine of the word of God, and, uh, and they bring conviction. Yeah. And uh, thank the Lord for that. Just so you're aware, be in prayer for the family that was just here, the visiting on Sunday. They slipped out. No, nobody did anything to offend them. They said uh, they're I didn't old. Think I saw that bad. Yeah, well, it was close. It was close. They said if there was anybody, that lady in the purple shirt, and uh, no, uh, they said their oldest daughter is uh, not feeling well, and so they were trying to uh, compose her somewhat. But they said, well, probably better get going. So uh, I was grateful. They they made sure to stick around long enough to tell me. We'll be back. <laughs> and so, and uh, but pray for them, if you will. Yes, they said they'll be back. The, uh, the, the wife will be at work on Sunday, but, uh, but the rest of the family will come. And so, so you, you would be in prayer for, uh, I think, Alexandra, I believe is her name. So be in prayer for her that she feels better. And uh, well, it's offering time now. Let's pray and ask for blessings upon tonight's offering. And uh, Thomas, why don't you pray and ask God to bless the offering. Turn to hymn number 188. Hymn 188, happiness is the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to be having a smile too. Let's try that a little bit here. You guys have been doing all right tonight. But let's uh, remember who we're singing for, man. Happiness is the Lord. Remember, we want to go to that first verse and then come back to the second verse and then do, do the whole end thing, all right? Lift it up on that first verse. Happiness is to know the Savior.
would come. And I uh, wanted to start something new on Wednesday nights. And uh, it is uh, Wednesday night, uh, not only a Bible study, but prayer meeting as well. And uh, so I want to do some things a little bit different in our Wednesday night service. Uh, many times we walk past our mission prayer letters. And uh, some will stop and read them. But I've asked Brother DeVito to pick out a few and every week just give us some information about our missionaries because uh, I want you to be able to be in prayer. So on the back of your prayer list, there were the list of the missionaries as he reads. If you find something, hey, you know, I can pray about that, write it down. And every week we can pray for these needs as our missionaries. And it, it would even be a blessing if, uh, if you're praying for that need. There's many of these uh, missionaries have email addresses. You can shoot them an email say, hey, Listen, I know this is a need in your life. I'm praying it before you. Amen. Something very simple like that and be a help and an encouragement to them. So, Brother DeVito, if you give us some missions update tonight. Amen. Well, I wanted to read three letters to you, and I'm just going to briefly touch each one of them. And uh, some of them are long, some of them are short. So uh, I've gone through each one of them to try to give you the highlights of each. Then also our missionaries to the Ukraine, uh, Polly Irving family. And uh, uh, if you bear with me as, as we try to uh, also uh, go through and uh, uh, read the letters and, and, and learn the missionaries. But Polly Irving family is to Ukraine. They're praising the Lord for a great summer. Uh, just God is bless them. They had an average of 86 in their Bible uh, clubs uh, this summer, and they're praising the Lord for that. Uh, just the attendance uh, with uh, boys and girls, I, I believe it was up to the uh, age of 16, and they, they averaged 86 for the two weeks that they had the Bible clubs. So just praising the Lord for that. Many of the children uh, uh, prayed and uh, uh, asked the Lord to save them uh, during that time. And so uh, I just continued to pray for the fruit off of, uh, from those uh, Bible clubs. Then also he just uh, wanted to pray for, or he was thanking the Lord for uh, uh, prayers for uh, Julia uh, DeSincio. De and uh, just uh, that the, the uh, Lord had given her a victory and the assurance of her salvation and has restored her health. And uh, didn't, he didn't mention too many uh, prayer needs on here, but just ask that uh, I, we would continue to pray uh, for them because the, uh, as, as we all know, they're in the fight, in the fight for, uh, for the Lord and to give out the gospel. And he said just uh, going along with preaching the gospel, the devil fights them. And uh, he wanted us to pray about that. And then our third missionary is the Jerry Jackson family. And they are uh, missionaries, uh, church planters there in Canada. And uh, uh, he, he, his, his, uh, in his prayer letter, he's, he's encouraging the preachers just to keep on preaching. Be instant, in season, out of season. Uh, reprove, rebu rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And he, he continues to, to uh, just encourage the, the preachers to be ready, to be instant, and to go out and preach the gospel. Um, he had mentioned several things that uh, they've had a, a great summer. They were able to preach at a, at a, and teach at a youth camp this summer and uh, had many, uh, many blessings about that. And then uh, just to continue to pray for lost souls who have been in the services there uh, at, the, at the church there in Canada. Uh, they're, they're seeing people come in and giving the gospel and uh, just uh, uh, they're praying. They're, they're still going out. You know, and they're still they're still in their lost condition, and he, he wants uh, to continue praying for those to be saved, those to uh, uh, that they would trust Christ as their personal Savior. So these three missionaries, uh, if you would continue to pray for them, Jerry Jackson family, Polly Irving uh, uh, to the Ukraine, and the, if, uh, if if we will we'll all remember them as we pray for our missionaries. Amen. Thank you, Davido, and uh, praise the Lord for good results. And, uh, you know, I was talking to um, missionaries in uh, uh, Croatia, and uh, I think it's Brother Leslie I was talking to. I can't remember if it's he or Brother Ward, but uh, in our conversation, in our church, when we say we got, you know, 60, 70, 80 people in church, oftentimes, you know, in America, we say, well, that's a small church, right? It's under 100 people. That's a small church. And really, the average church in America is 100 or less. It's the average size, including large churches. So that tells you how small some churches are in America, right? And so the average church is about 100 or less in all cities and towns, and that's, of course, across all denominations. But uh, they said in the Croatia, they said when you have 30 people in the church, they think you have a huge church. 
that's that's the mindset as Americans we think oh yeah everything's it's not the same all everywhere around the world yeah. and so be, be mindful of that so for 86 in the Ukraine in Bible clubs those are kids 86 kids yes, in Bible clubs praise God for that right yeah. and so be in prayer for that anybody have any answers to prayer this week Miss Lee okay okay Does. He'll always open the door if you let him. Yeah. And thank the Lord for that. Amen. That's good. That's good. Anybody else answer prayer this week? And then give you opportunity to praise God for it. Miss Kretzinger? Amen. And Brother Kretzinger says that is not an answer to prayer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thus it begins. So be in prayer for that. And, uh, Yes, yeah, one at a time, one at a time for sure. And uh, so be in prayer for Brother Kretzinger and those tests and uh, everything they've got to do. But new doctor, so a new, new round of doctor getting familiar with who you are and, and what you need. And so, But it's good to be, yeah, it's a whole other scenario. If you don't know the story behind their doctor, you can go and ask Ms. Kretzinger later. And uh, yes, I understand. And uh, anybody else answer a prayer? And, oh, Olivia. Yeah, amen. Yeah, and so praise God. Hey, she went to, she flew from Chicago, or from DFW to Chicago, and didn't get lost in the Chicago O'Hare Airport. Got on a little puddle jumper from Chicago to 
uh, to Paducah, Kentucky. And uh, she was like, well, that was different. And uh, so had that joy. And then uh, she, she told us last night when she flew back in, she had took her 20 minutes to get across the airport from one gate to the other, uh, from Paducah to DFW, you know, in, in O'Hare, and uh, just enough time to really get boarded on the plane. She's like, goodness. She said, I was running, too, and they're trying to run me over with those little cars. Doot, 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 doot. You know, trying to run me over. So all this happens, and uh, welcome to, to flying. And, uh, but thank the Lord for safe, safe travels. I'm glad to have you home. Piano was being quiet, very quiet. So it is a difference. It is. No, oh, we've already, yeah, already thought of that. Okay. Anything else? Okay. All right. Well, uh, those are answered to prayer, and thank the Lord for that. Brother Hood, there, I guess there's no prayer needs turning in the cards. You didn't see any. Okay. All right. So here's something else we want to do a little bit different, okay? Before we move on to the next song, I'd like a couple men to to pray and just be in prayer for our church and to pray publicly. What we'll do is if you will pray silently in your seat, and uh, we'll have a couple men stand and and be in prayer. You can pray for these needs in general. Pray for our missionaries. Uh, I'm not asking you to pray 30 or 40 minutes. Just in in general, uh, be in prayer. But we'd like to incorporate a time of corporate prayer as a church into our Wednesday night. We do, after all, call it a prayer meeting. And we hand out a prayer list. So we ought to pray. It's a good idea, right? And so now let me encourage you, especially young people, when we bow our head and close our eyes, sometimes we bow our head and close our eyes and nap. It's time to pray. And, hey, listen, even even though somebody else is praying out loud, you can pray silently. And God can hear your prayers and their prayers. And so if you be in prayer uh, in general, and I thank God for his goodness, pray for our campaign, continue to pray. Uh, I think the Sunday school roll showed we had 73 in Sunday school. 73. Yeah, that's according to all the Sunday school books. Oh, those are, we can't look at those numbers. Yeah, can't look at those numbers. According to Sunday school books, and uh, and uh, so and uh, 85 in church. Amen. Amen. And so I had to had to open up over here and set some people over here, and uh, that's a blessing. What do you do when all that gets full? Well, I guess we'll put chairs in the aisles and chairs in the foyer and chairs in the kitchen. And uh, But in the meantime, hey, another answer to prayer. I met with another builder today to, and gave him my idea, and he's going to draw up a bit as well. So I'm trying to meet with a couple different builders and get some different plans and different ideas and different costs. And let's find out who's going to be the most profitable, right, to, to, to utilize. And so if you continue to be in prayer for that, uh, i got some ideas. And as that develops, we'll, we'll keep you in, in, uh, in the loop. So let's pray. Ask the Lord's blessings again on tonight. Uh, ask God to bless our missionaries. And if you're able to, uh, you can kneel at your, at your seat or bow by your head at your seat. Uh, make your seat an altar. And, uh, but let's pray. And uh, tonight, uh, Brother Chad, if you'd start us off in prayer. And uh, Brother Nick, do you mind following Brother Chad? And then after they're done, then we'll sing another song, and then we'll get into the the preaching tonight. Go ahead, Brother Chad.
go ahead and sing one more song this evening, hymn number 215, if you will, stand together. Hymn 215, my Jesus, I love thee. <laughs> Lift it up on that first verse. hope you do love him now more than ever. And uh, the closer we grow to Christ, we ought to love him more and more. And thank the Lord for the opportunity to not only know him, but to serve him and to grow in Christ. Take your Bible tonight, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 feels like it's been about a month since we've been in the book of Philippians, but uh, we'll get back into it and maybe even close out chapter 3, preparing ourselves for chapter 4 a uh, week after next. Philippians chapter 3. And uh, just to kind of remind you, in case you have forgotten, what is the theme of the book of Philippians? Joy, joy right? Paul talks a lot about joy. And uh, we talked in the very beginning about joy killers. And, uh, and as we discuss these joy killers and things that, that try to destroy our joy, uh, every chapter we've been talking about something within that chapter that helps us to overcome that joy killer. Chapter 1, we learned in order to have joy despite circumstances, we have a single mind. It's gotta, you got to be considering and thinking about the gospel's sake. Uh, as Ms. Lee said, listen, uh, how, where's, where's the praise in the crown and the root canal and all that stuff? Well, the praise was an opportunity to witness to somebody else. Uh, right, and so that that's, we've got to uh, examine that. I was uh, I was talking to a pastor today, and some things that happened in his life, and he said, well, "Where's the joy in those situations?" He said, "Listen, it was God opening up to me in Psalm 23, where He says, He maketh me to lie down by the still waters.'" He said, "You know what? I just I, I would refuse to do that, and God made me lay down." And I said, "You know, I've never thought about that. He maketh me to lie down." We're so busy today, aren't we? To sometimes stop by the still waters and enjoy the blessings of God. The singleness of mind. Hey, we talked in chapter 2 about having joy despite people. People never steal your joy, do they? Oh, yeah. Well, hey, how do you have joy despite people? Having the submissive mind. Paul understood this. Listen, he's submissive per, first and foremost to Christ. But you know what? Even upon this earth, we got to learn to be submissive one to another, don't we? By the way, oftentimes you'll hear preachers say, hey, the Bible says the women ought to, or wives ought to submit themselves unto their husbands. And boy, that is true. The Bible does say that. But it also does say we submit ourselves one to another. Yeah. It does. You say, well, how do I know when to submit or when she's supposed to submit? Discernment. 
right? Discernment. And uh, there are certain things, listen, it, you would be wise to say, you know what? You're right. Other things, don't listen to her. I'm just joking. It's okay. Got real quiet right there. Did he say that? And uh, so, hey, the submissive mind. Hey, we got to learn not only to be submissive in life as far as we're talking husbands and wife for a moment, but you understand that in life, there's folks that we got to be submissive to anyways. If you go on the job tomorrow and you tell your boss, you are not telling me what to do. <laughs> Guess what your joy killer is? Your boss, Right? You now have a joy killer, and you killed his joy too, or her joy. And listen, we got to be saying, and it's interesting. You know, the Bible even teaches that, uh, that there's times we'll go out, we'll submit to all authority outside the world, right, in the world. But when we come home, all that, all that submission falls apart. We don't submit to God. We don't submit to each other. We don't submit to our place. Hey, if you're going to have joy despite people, you got to have that submissive mind. And by the way, part of that is not thinking so highly of yourself that nobody can teach you or help you or strengthen you. Chapter 3, the spiritual mind. We talk how to have despite or joy despite circumstances. And we've been covering these things. Paul would illustrate in three different ways his past, his present, and the future. How to have joy despite, uh, uh, despite, um, uh, I went completely blank. Uh, see, circumstances, people, things. That's what it was, things. And I got so many notes here, I'm trying not to go through all of them. And how to have joy, joy despite things. We talked about how, how Paul illustrated uh, like we're an athlete. He, Paul illustrated like he was an accountant. Lastly, we talked about Paul illustrated how we're aliens in Christ, right? Not aliens like UFO, but we're not of this world. We don't belong here. We just, we just, we're singing, oh, I want to see him, right? Uh, look upon his face. And as we talk about that, do you realize that if you're saved, you have a home in heaven. That, your citizenship is not here, it's there. Hey, if you're saved, listen, we're just passing through. We're pilgrims. And though I'm glad, and by the way, I'm not for what the NFL is doing, kneeling for the national anthem. I think they're, I think they're, they're anyways, uh, Think foolish for doing that. Listen, when the national anthem plays, you stand, you put your hand, hand on your heart, you salute the flag. It's not about worshiping the flag. It's not about worshiping America. Hey, it's about acknowledging what God has done for us and giving this this great nation. If it weren't for God, we wouldn't have America. But more so than a citizen of America, I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm on my way home. I'm just traveling through. This is just temporary. As we consider ourselves, read with me again, ch chapter 3 here, in uh, Philippians chapter 3. Begin reading with me in verse 17. Paul says, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. For many walk of whom I uh, have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. And can I just remind you, well, sometimes we say, oh yeah, the people outside the church, those are the ones that Paul's talking about, but Paul's warning them of people in the church. There's people within the church, he said, that are walking uh, uh, in, as a way that is against the cross. They're enemies of the cross. They're in his destruction. Their God is their belly. Their glory is in their, is in their shame. They mind earthly things. And might I just warn you and I, make sure we're not those ones walking that way. Amen. Then here's what he said in verse 20. For our conversation or our lifestyle, if you will, is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Where's Jesus right now? He's seated at the right hand of the Father, right? What is, what's his next, what's the next thing he's going to do? Rapture. When? We don't know. He doesn't know. The scripture says only the Father knows. One day, I can almost see it, if I could just illustrate it for just a moment. One day the Father's going to say, okay, son, time to go get him. Now? Yes! Right? Hey, just like the, uh, Olivia getting ready to go to Kentucky. It's like, hey, it's time to go load up. Hey, listen, the day before she couldn't sleep. She was all excited. For a week she was packing. <laughs> Pretty close. She couldn't wait. Hey, that time getting on the airport, right? She can't wait. She's ready to go. And can you just imagine the excitement of Jesus Christ as he's coming to bring his children home with him to be with him forever, the ones for whom he died. Listen, we talk about Jesus loving us and we understand that, but you realize how much he loved us? He gave his life for us. He shed his blood for us. And now when he comes back to rapture us out of this world, now we get to see the ones he loved and gave himself for. We get to see him face to face now. Amen. Finally, can you just imagine the joy in his heart? Yeah. The trumpet sounds. Poof, we're out of here. 
hey, he's there now, and we're looking for our Savior in heaven. And look what he says in verse 21, who shall change our vile body. Our what? Oh, not my body. No, not my body. We live in such a, a, a world today so stuck on themselves, so full of pride. Listen, the Bible teaches that our bodies are vile. They're wicked. He said, not mine. Don't take a bath for a week. What happens? Vile. Wicked, right? Hey, your, your body naturally is decaying, naturally stinks. Hey, go ahead. You've heard the old adage, hey, a week, W-E-E-K, without prayer makes one weak, W-E-A-K. Why? You live in the flesh. Your flesh is vile. If you let your flesh do what it wants to do, you don't know how far you'll go. And he says, he'll change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things to himself. What a day that will be. Let's continue talking about being aliens for just a moment. Yeah, but the good thing is, is we may be aliens, but we're not alienated. Amen. And so let's consider this for just a moment. Lord, we just love you. Thank you so much for this one day when we'll see the rapture happen. And we know, Lord, it's going to happen soon. The events on this earth, Lord, the way things are lining up, the, the nations that are rising against nations, the way nations are, are converging together to destroy Israel, Lord, the way that uh, wickedness and corruption is rampant, Lord, the way that the world and society is trying to build uh, a one world religion, one world government, one world currency, Lord, the technology, we see all these things. We know it's all coming to pass just as your word says. And so it now lets us know one day soon you're coming. Would you help us to be prepared? Lord, I think from the, uh, the newest folk that's here, Lord, everyone here is given a testimony of salvation, the time when they trusted you as Savior. But God, I dare say every one of us struggle in living like heaven is our home. Oft times we're discouraged, we're defeated, Lord. Oft times we live in despair. Oft times, Lord, we live in sin and wretchedness, and oft times we make decisions that disappoint you. God, would you help us? We know one day you'll turn our vile body into a, a body fashioned as unto yours, but until that day, would you help us to do our part to live as Christ would live? Would you help us, Lord, tonight? Would you speak to our hearts? We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Just by way of remembrance, I've told you, listen, because we are not of this world, the Bible teaches, listen, we are citizens of heaven. There ought to be things that are different about us than there is in the world. We said to you, first of all, that our names, you got to remember this, our name is written in heaven's record. If you're saved, you're on your way to heaven. Why do you live with a big frown on your face like the rest of the world when heaven is your home? I'm telling you, listen, if you're saved, heaven is your home. Heaven is your home. Heaven is your home. You're never going to leave there. Heaven is your home. Listen, you're going to walk on the streets. If you're saved, you're going to be on the streets of gold. You'll be with Jesus forever. Hey, one of these days, and it won't be long. Hey, listen, we're going to have that perfect body, never to go through all the torments and the struggles that we go through. I see some of y'all, as you try to take notes, your glasses come on, your glasses come off, your glasses come on, your glasses come off. You don't have to worry about that in heaven. Hey, some of you are like me, ragweeds season, you're saying, go away. In heaven, there'll be no ragweed. Yeah, hey, some of you like me, listen, or like hey, Brother Fowler, listen, Brother Fowler, your knee's bothering you now. You know what I said? Heaven, you'll never have to worry about that old yeah, wretched man. knee again. That's right. you, hey, in heaven, you won't have to listen to that pig valve. <laughs> Amen. Hey, thank God for technology and what, what medical advancements have done, but you know what? In heaven, you don't need any of that. I saw my doctor, or not, I didn't see my doctor. I saw the nurse practitioner. My doctor's gotten so busy, I never get a chance to see him anymore. I was telling the, the lady drawing my blood. I said, my, while I'm here, might as well get some blood work done. I haven't done it in about two years, so might as well do it. And I said, you know, I never see Dr. Ashford anymore. I said, I've sent about six, 12 people this way. I don't know who all are patients of his or who's not, who aren't. But I've sent a bunch of people this way, never thinking that one day it would make me and I could never see him. <laughs> He's busy as can be now. In heaven, won't need doctors. Yeah, Brother Drew, in heaven, don't need hospice. Yeah. Don't need the care. Hey, our name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life and heaven is our home. We've got a reason to rejoice. We've got a reason to be excited. We've got a reason to put a smile on our face. Listen, we're, our conversation is some, not supposed to be of this world, but our conversation is supposed to be in heaven because our name's written in heaven's record. We so told you secondly that you ought to learn to speak heaven's language. Hey, listen, if heaven's your home, then, you know, if America, America's your home, you speak, folks, most folks, well, it used to be English. 
Now it's Spanglish. One day it might be German. Or Korean. Hey, listen, folks. I think we'll be gone before this happens, but can you prove to me through the Bible that America will always be here? You can't. Well, I know one thing's for sure. If you're of heaven and your citizenship is he of heaven, then you ought to talk like it. Yeah, you ought to talk like it. Listen, it, there's something, we, we've already gone through all these things, but listen, we'll just bring it to remembrance. We ought to talk like heaven is our home, not just the things we talk about and how we talk, the words we use. Listen, the joy that comes forth out of us, listen, it ought to show heaven's our home. We told you thoroughly, we ought to learn to obey heaven's laws. If we're of, of heaven and heaven is our home, then why don't we get back to going... To living like the old black book says. I had this past week met with somebody who had visited our church and they've only been one time and, and he said a member of a, a, a church, very large church, lots of members. I mean, I'm always running across people that are members of this church. And he says, boy, he said, I came to your church and he said, one of the things that was so exciting, he said, you stood up and you said, this is what God says. And it's like, no apology. He was like, it was just very definitive. He, he, he made reference to something, and I said, oh, yeah, this is what, this, this is what it says to the, these, these folks. This is what they say. And he goes, preacher, you know, and you say it. He was just shocked because today we've watered everything down where we can't say what's right and what's wrong. It's what's right to you. No, it's not what's right to you. Heaven has laws, and we ought to follow them. And God forbid that the rest of the world know what heaven's laws are and look at the Christian and go, oh, really? Huh. I, I thought your Bible says you're not supposed to do that. God forbid they know more about what heaven's laws are because we refuse to live by them. We ought to live by heaven's laws. And then fourthly, we told you you ought to be loyal to heaven's cause. What is that? Jesus said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. How are we going about trying to reach the lost? I won't belabor the point, but if Jesus came back today, who, who do you take with you? Who, in other words, who's going to heaven because of you? You say, well, nobody, because I didn't die for anybody. Jesus did. Yeah, but you know what? God gave us the responsibility to tell somebody else about Christ. Whether it be your son or be your daughter or be your neighbor, or your coworker, hey, listen, it's our responsibility. If the church remains silent, how will they ever hear the gospel? Amen. Who is in line behind you because you gave them the gospel? You say, preacher, I, 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 I don't like that because there's not a long line. Only one reason, because we're not telling them. Yep. Amen. Well, I don't know how to tell them. Tell them what happened to you. Did you get saved? I mean, if you got saved, you ought to be able to know how to tell what happened to you. Right. You said, but, but I don't know what verses. It's a whole book. There's not specific verses you have to go to. Well, you can only lead someone to Christ through the Romans road. Did you know that, Brother DeVito? Only through the Romans road. So the John road is no good. The Isaiah road is no good. The Revelation road is no good. I mean, you can take, <laughs> hey, they say all roads lead to Rome. Well, that whole book all leads to heaven. Through Christ. Right. It is only one message. It's through Jesus Christ. But we ought to be faithful and loyal to heaven's cause. And then number five, this is what I couldn't get to last week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, however long ago it was. We ought to be looking for heaven's Lord. Yeah, if we're saved, are you saved tonight? Yeah, then we ought to be looking for Jesus. I, I don't mean, oh, yeah, when he comes, I'll be glad to see him. No, listen, when was the last time you woke up and you really believe what the Bible says and you walked outside and you looked towards the eastern sky and you said, Lord, is it today? When was the last time? I can't tell you the number of times I've driven up and down 35 at wee hours in the morning and, 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 and I've seen that sunrise and I thought, boy, that's beautiful. Lord, right there. That's the time right there. Of course, he didn't come. The moment you think not, right? But in my mind, in my finite mind, in my human mind, I think that's so beautiful. Listen, the heavens declare, declare his handiwork. Boy, Lord, if, you're, if this is the time to come, it's time right now. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. But listen, when I talk about looking for heavens, Lord, what I'm talking about, listen, our life ought to line up with that we're ready for him to come. Amen. Just imagine he comes tonight just like that. Did you read your Bible today? You weren't looking for him, were you? Did you spend some time in prayer with him today? Boop, he came. You weren't looking for him, were you? 
Did you hand out a gospel track today? Boop, here he is. You weren't looking for him, were you? You see what I'm saying? If we were truly looking for Jesus, what would be different about us? Can we all honestly say we'd be a lot different? We'd be a lot different, wouldn't we? Hey, if this was your last day on earth, Elena, this is your last opportunity to spend a day with sisters in the bedroom. From here on out, you get your own. Yes, right? I mean, this might be just some of you that you'll never understand. But all the, I mean, sisters never fuss and fight about things in bedrooms. Never, never, never. She has her space, you have your space, and you keep it all separate, nice and neat, both of you, and you never cross the line. Right. <laughs> yeah, by the way, if you believe that, I've got some, I got some oceanfront property in Arizona I'd love to sell you. You realize some of the things we fuss about? And, and I'm just picking on girls because I just, I have girls. Boys are worse though. Hey, the things we fuss about in life on th this present day, some of those things, if Jesus Christ comes back, is that going to matter at all? You're at odds with a brother or a sister or you're at odds with somebody because of some minute thing that, you know what, when Jesus Christ comes back, it's not even going to enter your mind in all of heaven. And yet all day long, you, it's tore you up and it's destroyed your walk and it's destroyed your joy. How do you overcome those situations? Listen, you've got to realize what's important in life. Jesus Christ is coming back and we've got to learn to live like it. C.T. Studd said, listen, th this, and this is not short, by the way. You may have heard one line of it, but let me read to you all of it. Two little lines I heard one day, traveling along life's busy way, bringing conviction to my heart, and from my mind would not depart. Only one, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, yes, only one. Soon will its fleeting hours be done. Then in that day, my Lord, to meet and stand before his judgment seat. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, the, the, the still small voice, gently pleads for a better choice, bidding me selfish aims to leave and to God's holy will to cleave. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, a few brief years, each with its burdens, hopes, and fears, each with its clays I must fulfill, living for self or in his will. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. When this bright world would tempt me sore, when Satan would a victory score, when self would seek to have its way, then help me, Lord, with joy to say, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Give me, Father, a purpose deep, in joy or sorrow thy word to keep, faithful and true, whate'er the strife, pleasing thee in all my daily life. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Oh, let my love with, with fervor burn, and from the world now let me turn, living for thee and thee alone, bringing thee pleasure on thy throne. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, yes, only one. Now let me say, thy will be done. And when at last I'll hear the call, I'll know I'll say, t'was worth it all. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life to will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And when I'm dying, how happy I'll be if the lamp of my life has been burned out for thee. What if we lived like that? What if we lived as though Jesus was coming back today? Paul said, listen, our conversation is in heaven. We're talking about the matter of joy for a moment. And Paul, just to bring you to remembrance, is in house arrest. Any moment now, his head's going to be cut off. The average Christian today's reaction to that. <laughs> a lot of folks jumped right there. Is that not the truth? Listen, if you were facing your head being cut off today, it's the end of the world. But wait a minute. Paul lived like, guess what? <laughs> I'm going home. Yeah, man. 
I'm going home. And oh, by the way, not, not, not to make light of his situation, but he's taking a shortcut home. Tell me about that, Paul. That is bad. Consider, wait a minute. We live off times every day when this problem arises or that problem arises or this situation's happening or so-and-so's done this to me or so-and-so's done that or so-and-so said or, or so-and-so didn't fulfill this promise. And we, we look at all those things and it's the end of the world for us. But wait a minute, Jesus Christ is on his way back. Where is the hope that is supposed to be in the Christian? The bill comes in the mail. And we go, oh no, what am I going to do? You realize there might be one day when you open that thing up and you say, well, oh no, what am I going to do? It's not going to matter because you won't be here. Amen. You say, but I'm here now. Yes, listen, I understand you're here now. I understand it needs to be taken care of now. But there's still a God in heaven that can help with every need until he comes back. Amen. Do we trust him? Where's our hope? Where's our joy? Where's our excitement that one day we're out of here? That hope and that joy ought to be greater than any conflict, any burden, or any joy killer out there. The hope of the appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look with me in Ephesians chapter 2 for a moment. Just flip back one, one book. Ephesians chapter 2. Whew. Oh, the Bible's so good, isn't it? He said, oh, I'll read it. And I, I have a hard time reading the Bible. I'll fall asleep when I read it. Uh, you better think about what you're reading. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. In case you don't know, that word quickened means to be made alive again. You were dead, the Bible says, and now you're alive. You pass from death unto life. And he says, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and, and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. I want you to notice, here in this verse, Paul said, our conversation... You know, what it, you know what our lifestyle used to be? It's all about me. Me, 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 me. My wants, my desires, my flesh, my mind. Well, I just thought, well, I, I, I just, I want. And that all comes, listen, by nature, the children of wrath. That's what we all were. But in Christ, we're to be different. Our lifestyles, our conversation is not of this earth anymore. It's not of this flesh. It's not of the lust of my mind. It's of heaven. Notice what he said there in verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, for by grace are, or ye are saved. Amen. You didn't deserve it. You weren't born into it. Hey, God didn't owe it to you. But by the grace of God, he extended to you his love to give you salvation. Yeah. Oh, wow. And he's raised us up. Notice this. He hath raised us up. Why are you so down? He raised us up. Folks, you've got to realize God lifts up things. Satan squashes it down. And when your life, when everything in life is pushing you down, it's not of God. And when you let yourself get squished down, it's not of God. When you're mentally, listen, you're down in the dumps all the time, it's not of God. Spiritually, when you're down in the dumps, it's not of God. Where is that from? The Bible says he raised us up together. Notice what he says. Not just, to, well, we, we all just live on cloud nine. <laughs> Right? Is that what he's saying? No, look what he said. He raised us up together to, oh, look at this, to what? Made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So, what, what do you mean? In God's mind, he already sees you there. He already sees you sitting with Christ. You said, but because he's God, he knows past, present, future. He knows everything. He sees it all. And listen, in one straight line where we're, we're living day by day, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but he does. Yeah, but I do know, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I do know at some point I'm going to be with him. Amen. And I can't wait. I can't wait. 
made us, together, made us to sit together in heavenly places that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. How was God going to show his kindness to us through the ages? Well, because I'm going to walk around like a big ape, dragging my knuckles and my, hang, my lip hanging out. How does God show forth to the ages his loving kindness to us? The Bible says, let your light shine. Let your light so shine. Why? So that the man and people that you come, around, come in contact with, hey, they may see your good works, the Bible says, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You know what's supposed to happen? We ought to be talking about what God's doing in our life. Amen. We ought to be talking about the answered prayer. We ought to be talking about, hey, listen, the goodness of God. You said, but God hasn't done anything recently in my life. If he saved you, that's more than enough. Amen. To drag our carcass from hell to heaven, if that's the only prayer he ever answered, it's more than I even deserve. Right, right. Yeah, if I had no house to live in, if I had no family behind me, if I had no finances, if I had no refrigerator with food in it, if I had no clothes to wear, but I had a home in heaven, that's fine. Listen, I understand. We want those things now. I understand they bring us peace and comfort and joy now. But we got to also remember we're not of the now. Amen. We're to be in heaven. And consider with me, if you will, for a moment, some of you, hey, listen, you, you have uh, loved ones who have gone on before you and they're in heaven now waiting for you. Think about that. That day when we're re reunited with them, we will never be without them again. Oh, what a day that will be. Look, jump down with me in verse 12. He talks about here that at the time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise and having no hope and without God in the world. Look at that verse. That, that verse is not encouraging, is it? But I want you to notice, he says, at that time, talking about when you're lost. But now in verse 13, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Listen, you were way out there. Hey, you were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. You were strangers of the covenant. You had no hope. You had no promise. You were without God. But now because of the blood of Christ applied to your life, now you're drawn nigh to him. Amen. Wow. How can you be discouraged with that? To know that there Jesus is and I'm, he's right with me. And he said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now listen, we've all gone through hard times and we will all continue to go through hard times and times may even get more hard than what they've ever been. But God is still on the throne. He's still coming back and he's still coming soon. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 says, for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? What is yours? What makes you happy? What brings you joy? Ice cream. I hate to tell you, but ice cream's gonna melt. It's gonna be gone. You get six kids in the house, everybody gets some ice cream, you go, hey, I want some, and it's gone. You're like, Psh, hope you all enjoyed that. Or the times when you get the half gallon, you get some, but they leave it out on the counter. And nobody puts it back in the fridge. And by the time you go back to get it, it's that mushy stuff. And you're like, I didn't want to shake. I wanted ice cream. Well, put it back in the freezer. It doesn't work that way. It's not the same. Well, what is your hope? Uh, you get a pay raise. You might lose a job. What happens when the economy crashes again? Your hope is all in that job. And when it's gone, now what? You have no hope. What's your hope? Oh, it's my family. I love family. I thank God for my family. I rejoice in, in, in where my family's at right now. One of my biggest fears, what if family doesn't stay where they're at now in their walk with God? 
What happens? Can I, can I just tell you, hey, let's just, we have to face reality. None of us know our future. Amen. It might not be my kids. It might be me. Let's face reality. Amen. Listen. What happens when family falls apart? Now you have no joy, no hope anymore, no peace. Paul said, what is our hope? What is our joy? What is our crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? You realize the blessed hope? Oh, the, the, the Baptist of yesteryear used to preach about the blessed hope over and over and over and over and over again. What's the blessed hope? It's the rapture. Da, 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 da. I don't know what the tune the, rap, the trumpet's going to sound, but he's going to play a tune. And when that tune sounds, uh, Paul says, Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? The Bible says we shall see him in the air. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. That's my hope. Oh, I've got a lot of work to do. It seems like the more work I do, the more work I have to do. It seems like the more put stuff I put on my list so I get more organized. Hey, by the time I start knocking stuff off, I knock one thing off, 10 more jump on. And I say, stop it. You got to catch up sometime. You know what? One of these days, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. Because you say, oh, is that, what does that mean we all just sit here? Oh, listen, we're all going to sit here, put on Nike shoes, and drink purple Kool-Aid waiting for Jesus to come back. Some of you that are younger, you might not have any idea what that's a reference to. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. That's, that's not what the Scripture teaches. We are to be faithful. We are to serve Him. We ought to walk as though He's coming back. We ought to take care of our responsibilities. We ought to take care of our homes. We ought to take care of our families. Hey, you ought to be a good employee on the job. Why? Because he's coming back. And you know what? This is the only chance we have to be a witness for him. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 13, the Bible teaches us here, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know why we ought to live different? Not just because I'm saved, and though that's a good enough reason. Not just because others are lost, though that's a good enough reason. But because my Lord and Savior's coming back soon. I don't know that I have next 20 years. I don't know that I have 10 years. I don't know I have five years. I don't know that I have tomorrow. Jesus is coming soon. So we ought to live soberly, he said. We ought to live righteously and godly. As aliens, as pilgrims, sojourners, as travelers to this world, we ought to remember that our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Remember that. How do I have joy in my life despite these circumstances? Don't forget your name's written in the Lamb's book. How do I have joy despite these things that are going on in my life? You have to learn to speak heaven's language. There's a scripture reference. Some of you may know it. If I asked you to quote it, I wonder if somebody could. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Did you catch that? And we know that all things work together for good. <laughs> to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose, okay? If you don't know Romans 8, 28, let me encourage you to memorize it. It starts off, for we know. That's pretty strong. For we know that all things work together for good. Not that they would all be good, but they will bring out a good result if we'll let God do His work. All things work together. My preacher, you don't know what just happened in my life. It's the end of the world. Hey, you know what? I, when the end of the world comes, I'm going to heaven. Yep. Told you, it all works together for good. 
It all works together for good. Listen, it may not be the end of the world. It just feels like it. But we got to learn to speak heaven's language. Why? Why do you have a smile on your face? Look what just happened in your life. Because Jesus is coming soon. And when he comes, I don't have to mess with this anymore. We got to learn to speak heaven's language. We got to learn to obey heaven's laws. By the way, many times, you know why Christians today, oftentimes, live in turmoil and, and hardships and difficulties? Because they reject God's laws. They serve a God with their lips, the Bible says, with flattery, yet their heart is far from me, he said. Listen, let's not be like that. Let, let, me, let me just tell you what the Bible teaches that is. That's called hypocrisy. You're faking it. Don't just do it on the outside, yet your heart's far from God. Obey his laws. And the Bible says that his laws are not grievous. <sighs> Wednesday night, got to go back to church. <sighs> what? Now he's going to call on people to pray in the middle of service? Great, please don't call on me. 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 Right? <laughs> and reading mission prayer letters? What is this all about? What, are we going to start being here till 12 o'clock at night now? No, not quite. 11.30 maybe. <laughs> you understand? Hey, sometimes we act like the things we do for God are such hardships. And yet he walked up a hill called Calvary with a cross on his back. Allowed himself to be nailed to that old rugged cross. Hung there, naked, battered, torn, wounded, bleeding, suffering for you and for me. Oh, it's the least I can do. It's my reasonable service. Hear my Lord. Send me. Lord, what would thou have me to do? Hey, listen, we've got to learn to speak heaven's language. We've got to learn to obey heaven's laws, and we've got to learn to be loyal to heaven's cause. There's somebody out there. They're without Christ. You've got the answer. You've got the cure for their sinful condition. You've got the answer in your heart to bring them from death to life, from hell to heaven. Amen. And you haven't told them. My friends, listen. You know how to have joy despite circumstances? Learn, learn to be a witness. Yep, that's right. I don't know about you. Listen, in my personal life, to be just being transparent to you, sometimes, listen, as being pastor, sometimes, listen, in the ministry, I was talking to another pastor today, and he said, you know, sometimes pastoring is, is just really, it's a position designed by God to, to be lonely. You spend time alone with God. You spend time alone in his word. Somebody comes to you for counsel and you spend time alone with that burden. You don't share it with anybody. Some of you ask my wife, hey, did you know about? She's like, huh? Oh, preacher didn't tell you? No. Unless you ask me to tell her, I don't tell her. She doesn't know. Not for her to carry. That's my burden to carry. We're talking about that and he said, it's just, it's just a lonely place. And I'm not complaining. But what I want you to know, sometimes in life, when all of a sudden your mind gets wrong and your spirit gets wrong and you want to say, woe is me, you know what helps? I stop and remember some of the things that God has done. Amen. I remember of a little girl being baptized just a few weeks ago, right? I remember, listen, of a person one time at a restaurant sitting there in the middle of a restaurant in the public asking Christ to be your Savior. Amen. I remember a time Lexi, you sitting here on the front while I'm talking to an 83-year-old man here who trusted Christ as his Savior. And I walked out, and I was just already on cloud nine, and my daughter comes to me and says, Dad, I just got saved. What? She said, I was listening to everything you just said, and I trusted Jesus as yeah, my man. Savior. I remember that. I remember a lady, she comes, and she said, I, I knew it all here, and I, had, I knew what I was supposed to do and the right things, but it just didn't grasp it in my heart. But you came. Hey, I remember that. I remember a time on my birthday where, listen, family was going, hey, you ready to go out and eat? No. Nope. Mrs. Lee said, I, I'm struggling with this thing of salvation. Sitting right here on this pew saying, hey, listen, I need to get this settled. And seeing it settled. I remember it. Listen, I can take you person after person after person. I can take you to a seat right over there. I can take you to a seat right there. I can take you to a seat different altars and to that office over there. I can take you in that office over there. Listen, times when I've had the opportunity to lead people to Christ one after another, after another, after another, after another. And you know what gets me going and keeps me going is knowing, you know what? There's a cause worth living for. Jesus is coming back and I get to take some folks with me. Amen. 
Hey, well, that's because you're the preacher. No, <laughs> listen, the Bible teaches that's for all of us. It's for all of us. My friends, listen, do you have joy despite things? Is there joy? That's, that's the conclusion of chapter 3. We actually made it. We're getting to chapter 4. Only four chapters in this book. It shouldn't only take us about a year to get through it all. <laughs> but listen, Philippians is so full of stuff in here that when I'm struggling in life and, and, and life is falling apart, I can go through it and look in it and say, Preacher, or, or Lord, this is, this is what I need right here. And you just thought it was only one verse in the book of Philippians. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. But there's so much more. Amen. That's right. So much more. Where's your joy tonight? Where's your hope? Where's your rejoicing? Mine is that Jesus is coming soon. Amen. I'm telling you, watch the news. Don't get discouraged. Oh, no, another mass shooting in, in Las Vegas. Oh, now they're talking this. Oh, now, oh, yeah, it's bad out there, sure. As it was in the days of Noah. Amen. So shall it be in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. He's coming soon. Amen. I'm not rejoicing that people are hurt or people lost their lives, but I'm rejoicing in knowing that one day soon. We're out of here. Amen. And by the way, I don't buy that, that nonsense that we're going to go through half the tribulation or all the tribulation. I believe, according to the Bible, the church goes through none of the tribulation. Amen. Right. We go home before the tribulation starts. Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness. We thank you for your love and, Lord, you, your sacrifice on Calvary. But, God, we love to, the, to know that through your word we can read and we can understand that one day all of this life as we know it will be over. The struggles and the burdens and the heartaches will be done. And we get the opportunity to be with you forever. God, would you allow that to be the peace and the joy and the comfort that allows us to have joy despite things in life that destroy our joy. Help us to know that you're coming soon, but Lord, help us to live like you're coming soon. And if we'll begin to live soberly, righteously, godly in this present evil world, Lord, I promise you, there'd be a many a Christian, their joy would be full once again. They lost it. It's gone. They need to acknowledge it. And as David said, Lord, would you restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. God, please help us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.